The winner of this war got promoted in our CWL group. What's going on Clash Bashers? Rocky here today and today we're going to be talking about Mad Ram CWL. Did we get promoted or did we stay in Champs 3? We're going to talk about that here today and guys make sure you stick around to the end of the video when I actually reveal whether or not we got promoted. But I'm going to go ahead and show you guys war by war how things went, show you guys some of my favorite attacks from the week and talk about things that could have been done better and things that didn't quite go our way. And we're going to start in war number three just because this is my attack and it was my favorite attack that I did during this week but also I wanted to announce that we're bringing back comment question of the day hashtag CQOTD and we're gonna start today with Aaron Jacob do you think there'll be a new game mode or new village and the big update by Supercell and honestly I don't have an answer do I think it's more than I hope I hope there's a new game mode or village or something in a big update this year because we need something man we we need something to spice up the game we need something to add depth to the game is my opinion on it if you guys want to ask your own questions whether it's about clash clans or a different supercell game or even just something about me personally put hashtag cqotd with your question down there in the comments that way i can find it easier and i'm gonna just start answering one of those a day and hopefully we can have some fun with it but let's go ahead and let's talk about what happened this week during the cwl but unfortunately that attack was an award that we lost but we should have won this war guys we had percent on this one but unfortunately we had a couple of one stars you see right there base number seven is one star and base number one was one star uh, if we got those up to two stars, it would have been good. Base number one was rough. The blimp dropped a little bit short. Base number seven, uh, Hendo caught the unluckiest tornado trap of all time. He flew his blimp. It got to the town hall, but right next to the town hall was the tornado trap. So, so unlucky. So, we end up losing. This is war number three. However, in war number two, the war before that, we had a nice war. We won war number two, 35 to 30, and it had some of my favorite attacks of the week. CS track came in with an absolute absolutely op blizzard lalo i like to call it houdini but uh, a lot of people know it as blizzard so i'll start calling it blizzard for you guys but the value he gets from his blizzard his entry which i think is one of the strongest entries in the game right now it's just insane check this out the blimp's gonna come in here and he's gonna drop it in he's gonna pull out the clan castle but he's also gonna be able to take the clan castle out with the super wizards he's gonna get the scatter shot out he's gonna get the town hall out he's gonna get that expo out and notice the tornado trap is spinning also so just insane value from the blizzards to start this attack and that's just gonna set up pathing for his heroes and he's gonna do a nice little hero dive in here check this out he's gonna actually do a double layer wall break because when you're doing a wallo you're gonna need to get the enemy queen out which he just did there with his king and you're gonna need to get the enemy royal champion out here and his heroes are gonna be able to achieve that he does bring three headhunters in just in case like you can pop the warden's ability send the headhunters in and get out one of the heroes but he does this in such a way that he doesn't need to do that so the king the queen the royal champion all working through there in the meantime he's gonna go ahead and start the lalo in here he doesn't want to hesitate he doesn't want to waste any time this one wasn't close on time or anything but since the heroes aren't going for the eagle artillery he knows that the lalo is gonna have to get the eagle so he might as well start that lalo phase and get towards the eagle artillery now check this out his world champion is actually taking out the defending world champion so he ends up not even needing the headhunters because his hero dive was so op warden ability was just beautiful through here to protect all of these balloons this one just crushed man like like i said this made my uh, who my hydra look silly this was crushed just destroyed the base such such great execution on it balloons all throughout we got plenty of cleanup throughout minions we got headhunters that can clean up and this was crushed from cs track a very nice attack maybe my favorite attack of the cwl but also during this war we had one of my other favorite attacks which was this queen charge hybrid from tilt just because it was kind of unique how he did it against this teaser base you don't really see this too much because these teaser bases can be a pain but check out this play that he does here what he's going to do is he's going to send in this yeti he's going to send a couple hogs to pull the clan castle and then a few headhunters to take out the enemy queen does get a little bit lucky there's not more traps there because the headhunters did almost get taken out but he's going to take out that enemy queen pull the clan castle down and those super minions actually take a few shots so they're not going to have that extended range or well, the super minion i should say and then he's just going to be able to start working here with his queen and this is just so well played out and this wasn't 
like the only OP 200 IQ move he made here. Like when I was watching this attack, I was like, oh boy, this is uh, this is gonna be something. But like the moves he made were so calculated and so well thought out, it was really nice. So obviously the queen's gonna work through here, get to the town hall, clear that out, right? And then he's just going to go ahead and let her pick which side she's going to go to. He's going to freeze the Town Hall, freeze the Scatter, freeze the Warden. Because he knows that Warden Pestle can do a lot of damage. Then he's going to go ahead and wall break that Queen in so that she can get into this compartment. And notice that little cross section right there. It's open. So the Queen will actually have free reign to go through there. He's brought in a Siege Barracks so that he can actually set the funnel on the opposite side of the Queen. So the Queen's over here at 6 o'clock. He's going to set the funnel at 9 o'clock with that Siege Barracks right now and the king remember in a siege barracks you get free pekka and free wizards so that's gonna help set this funnel up really nicely and then he'll have hogs coming out lighter later later since he's running light on the hogs anyways he's got 15 miners and only six hogs here but he'll have nine hogs coming out of the clan castle and this is the part that was weird he actually throws the world champion down on this scatter shot at the bottom and that's what's w what was weird to me because normally the world champion goes in with the hybrid but since the world champion went down there she was able to protect the queen and actually allow the queen to stay up and get more value meanwhile the hybrid's going to work through the middle of the base with that warden's ability and the heal spells like he timed them up so nicely it was actually a really smart play to put that royal champion down there so that he can get that section out and keep his queen up most of the time if you're able to keep your queen up through a hybrid you're gonna three star that's just the way it goes and he does just that the queen stays up he's got plenty of hogs plenty of miners throughout the base this one just crushed like i said this one caught me off guard it was surprising but another one of my favorite attacks and this is war two these guys were getting in their comfort zone getting you know feeling real nice and it was good to see like we went on to have a pretty good week even though we lost war number three we went on to have a pretty decent week overall in my opinion so right there three star bada bing bada boom tilt making some plays boys in war four we absolutely crushed guys 35 to 28 mad ram not playing around unfortunately my base got tripled again my base did not hold up this week the mad ram guys just came out swinging man we we had a nice little week and war five a closer war and we almost lost this war look at the percentage here 85.2 to 85 percent this was so close they had the last attack and they got an 80 percent against jj's base if they get a few more percentage points they win it but again we had a silly mistake of a one star here if we clean up that one star like we're not in that predicament so luckily we get the win there it, it, we we win this war and uh don't get set back so it was really a nail biter but we got the victory war number six we crush them guys 37 to 29 the mad ram boys went to town and put up three star after three star and i wanted to show off posty's attack from this war because it was really cool seeing a dragon dragon rider a hydra but with a flame flinger the new siege machine yes we are using it uh, throws in a couple Coco Loons there testing for Teslas because you don't want the Teslas just eating that thing up and then he's just gonna send it in he actually caught the tornado there Posty had a great week uh, Post and Hockey both had 18 stars leading the clan so it was good to see him just hitting everything and hitting it well so basically you throw that flame flinger and just let it go for the town hall and don't worry about it you set it and forget it in the meantime he's gonna work on this bottom side with his heroes he's got his king and queen working and looking like his queen's gonna walk on him but that's all right he's got the king in the compartment so that he can go ahead and take out the eagle artillery the wall break a little bit sus there but the queen ends up, ends up actually coming back through here uh, so the queen's actually going to save this a little bit in the meantime he's going to go ahead and set up the hydra so the dragons and dragon riders and then notice he's got bats still here left over which is really cool he likes to use the yetis on these to help out with uh getting down some of those extra defenses the town hall is down now and that flame flinger is just going to release whatever clan council troops are in it uh we get some balloons and a dragon rider but that's the crazy thing it can take down the town hall and then release some cc troops it's absolutely insane look at the dragons and the riders working through here just trying to get as much of the splash down as possible the queen actually gets massive value she ends up going back the right way that he wanted her to and she gets massive value to help this one stay up 
Uh, we get through the single and or try to get through the single in the middle, I should say. Uh, we bring in the world champion on the top side to try to get that scatter shot out and just set this one up really nicely. Once that scatter goes down, this base is pretty much crushed for the bats. Like, there's really not much up that's going to stop the bats. We do have a wizard tower, but with three freezes, that's not going to be an issue. You can just freeze all this stuff and he's going to be fine. I mean, he's still got three dragons up also, not to mention the royal champion's ability just went off. Uh, host crush this one, but I really like the flame flinger on this one. The use of the flame finger is fun. We did have a few missteps with the flame flinger this week, uh, where it just seemed to ignore targets. But this one was really good, and he gets the three star in a war that we absolutely crushed these guys in, which that's what we need to see. In war number seven, uh, they put up a little bit more of a fight, but the Mad Ram guys again put up 36. They really got in a, in a groove and just took over some of these wars 36 to 34. But this was war seven, we got the victory. So you saw there, we basically go five and one in those wars, right? But what about war number one? War number one that is for all the marbles. Basically, whoever won this one won our group. And the winner of the Tide War was uh, Viet Tri. We lost on percentage. We needed 26 more percent in total to close that gap. But again, guys, we had some issues here. We had a one star. And again, it's not to try to single anyone out, but the one stars killed us this week. Uh, it, was a, it was a rough one star. The blimp, the warden just kind of went in an awkward spot, didn't cover the blimp, and the blimp just did not get all the way to the town hall. Could have maybe ran loons and a drag rider rather than the sneakies that got blown up, but the one stars hurt us this week. So we end the week five and two, and honestly, guys, we should have been promoted. Uh, the reason that one would have decided it because you get a 10 star bonus when you win a war. So if you take away the 10 stars that they got for the bonus, they go down to 295, add 10 stars to us, we go up to 298, we win the group. Honestly, we should have been seven and oh, but things happen, man. It, it's just the way it goes. We, I felt like we got better as the week went on and we were starting to grow as a clan. We addressed a lot of issues. We got a lot of that out there. So we're on the right track. We just got to get there. Uh, you can see some of these numbers, man. These guys went to town putting in a lot of work this week. So proud of my guys. We didn't get the promo, but I feel like we're on the right track. Let me know how your guys' clan did. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys have a great day. Keep on clash bashing.